got it. And there we go. Very good. We are live on Facebook. So Hello, I'm everybody. Setting myself real, up real quick. We'll give it a minute or two. We'll let everyone come in and join us because a bunch of people get notifications so they can watch us live. Exciting. How are you doing? I am very, very well. Is it's, it also sunny in Poland? It's, it's quite windy weekend, I would say. Um, yeah, but in here, water is almost always warm. So <laughs> <laughs> no problem, no problem in this. You step in and it's, you are like in Egypt. <laughs> yes, 100%. So you, don't you even call the area where you walk in the beach? Do I remember that correctly? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it is as close to a beach that you can get in Poland, I guess. That's really nice. <laughs> that's that's that that's correct. To, to get like a tropical conditions, that's the easiest. That's like 30 minutes driving from capital city from Warsaw. So <laughs> and get and then you can get tropical conditions. <laughs> that's that's amazing. Okay, great. We have a few people in the room. So welcome everyone to another edition of Scuba Sunday. Today I've got a very special guest with me. It's Michal Kosut from Deep Spot. He's the director of Deep Spot Poland, the deepest pool in Europe. And it's very deep, uh, as you will hear in our interview. Uh, just as always, if you have been watching these before, you can ask any question to Michal in the comments. So you can put them in the comments. We'll answer everything as good as we can right away. And if you are watching this in replay, in replay, it's the same thing. You can put your questions in the comments. We will come back in the next few days and we will also answer as much as we can. We're really excited to have this topic going on. It's such an amazing facility. I've been there myself recently, which was really, really cool. And yeah, you will have seen it. Actually, you will slowly get the videos trickling in that we have done there. Our freediving in mermaid skill videos were shot in Poland, which is really, really cool. Just a few more points. Get involved. Let us know in the comments that you're here. Give us a little bit of a shout out and let me know if you've been there. Otherwise, Michal, how are you doing? I am doing very, very well. Thank you, Corinna. <laughs> That's great. So uh, seeing that we have a lot of people already in the room, I'm just going to start asking you a bunch of questions. Sure. Tell us a little bit more about yourself. Oh, um, so I started diving years ago, actually when I was 14. So I get enthusiastic about, I, I, I used to compete in swimming, but I was not getting the results. Mm -hmm. So my coach, on that time told me probably the best thing for me he told me rather you go to this swim camp over the summer maybe you will go to a scuba diving camp so being 14 i started diving and i immediately knew that i want to become an instructor and that was actually 26 years ago <laughs> Ten years, ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, some time ago. And uh, since then, I progress uh, in diving. I become a dive master and instructor in the age of 18. So relatively fast. Um, while I was studying, I was working for diving industry. Actually, my first job in diving industry was sweeping the floor in the dive center when I was around 15, 16. I'm not sure if this was fully legal, <laughs> but they were hiring me and I was, I was working with compressors and with equipment and with everything. And I, I, I love it. I, since, since the beginning, I, I, I love it. And uh, yeah, and then I progressed my career. I finished um, studies and I was actually studying political science and I knew that's not my thing. 
or maybe working in the office is not my thing, uh, even though I tried. But um, for last 20 years or even a bit more, I am, I am connected to diving industry. I'm working in a diving industry, actually. Yo, that's a long time. But yes, that's, I have a very similar path. Uh, myself, I was also, yeah, I do things and you start studying things, but it just, diving just calls you back. I can see in your background, it's just that everybody watching us now, I'm sure, has the same feeling, just getting drawn to your background. This is really cool, by the way. <laughs> I, I, I need to say one thing here, because I remember that moment when I was around, let's say, advanced rescue level, and I was about to become a dive master. And I, would, I already start to think about being an instructor. And my main motivation to become an instructor was actually that I won't be carrying the tanks. Because for last, since I was working for the club, I was carrying the tanks, right? And why I'm saying it, because all those steps that I did, right? Becoming an instructor, then becoming an instructor trainer, then working uh, for a training um, agency and also now managing that place I'm still carrying the tanks <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's, it's one of those things unless you go and switch to free diving I don't think you will get rid of it <laughs> that's true that's true this is what my free diving team is, is telling me right you need to do a bit more on our section then there is no tanks management there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing about freediving. I know we had a, we had a, uh, a, a talk to, a member was talking uh, also to, to people Nita's. the other day, to Nita's, yeah. um, about the freediving stuff. That was also really exciting. Yeah. So how did you end up in Deep Spot? Um, so uh, I, I started, so around... 12 years ago, I settled in Poland mm -hmm. uh, because before I was, I was traveling a lot, working in, in, in lots of remote areas. But uh, around 2010, when I become 2009, 2010, when I become an instructor trainer, I settled in Poland and I started to mainly work in the instructor development part. Uh, I was doing it for, for five years, and that brought me to uh, being hired by a training agency as the regional manager. Mm -hmm. So for last, uh, so from 2015 up to 2021, I was, I was working in a training agency as the regional manager, also as the examiner. So I had a privilege to travel again a lot. Um, I was managing mainly the countries in uh, Central Eastern Europe, but mm -hmm. uh, also beautiful places like Greece. Uh, but uh, then um, in the meantime, this project was growing here in Poland and um, I was involved in it from the beginning because uh, we as a training agencies um, were involved, like we were giving lots of advices on different stuff that is already, already in here. And this is how I met those people in Deep Spot. And uh, back in 2021, when Deep Spot was already opened, they were looking for, for the person to take care not only of construction and development, but more on the operation of, of that mm -hmm. place. And I was in, in the point where I really wanted to come back to the operation because how interesting it is to work for a training agency, you miss that connection with the product, with the field mm -hmm. a bit. Yes. And I was, I was missing it badly. So, so 2021, uh, we've met here and uh, that was the right moment. And I started uh, working as a, as a director here uh, in October 2021. So around seven, eight months ago. Seven, yeah. Nice. Really, really cool. So 
where, okay, for all the people, I, I know it by now, but can you tell the people out there, where is Deep Spot located? So how is it, how easy or difficult is it to get there? Sure. So, so we are located in central Poland, uh, in Szczonów, super difficult <laughs> name to, uh, to pronounce, right? We couldn't find more difficult name of the city uh, to pronounce <laughs> by non-Polish speakers it's because there is lots of shh and sh. Yes. And is... when you see the word written out, it also looks very different than when you say it. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. But Mishchonov is actually located 30 minutes driving from Warsaw. So from mm -hmm. capital city, um, there is also airport. The main airport is in Warsaw. So it's around 30 to 40 minutes driving, depends on the, uh, on the traffic. Uh, but if you have a car, it's super easy to, to reach us. We also obviously have the taxi options um, here. Uh, unfortunately, there is no train option yet, uh, but uh, they are talking that most probably something will happen over the next two years. Oh, so, wow. Potentially, there will be even easier, easier way to, to, to get to us. However, if we are talking about international visitors, they mainly get to us through the airport, and then they either hire the car if they spend a few more days here mm -hmm. and they want to, to go around as well, or they just take the taxi, come here, and taking into consideration that if you are a scuba or freediving enthusiast, that's a heaven. Yes. <laughs> you can just stay in that place, right? I think, Corinna, it was a bit of your scenario for, for the video shoot. 100%. You, you here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is, it is so amazing. And I mean, it's, it's funny that you're explaining this because we were there with a very international group of travelers. So I came from South Africa and then we have a few people, colleagues from, from like Turkey and from Korea and from Germany. So we all came in different ways. So I actually then went by train back to Austria, which was really simple uh, from Warsaw. And we had colleagues coming from Germany and they, it was only a five hour drive for them. So five hours is not that long if you think about it. So it is really, it's easy to reach. And that's one thing about Central Europe generally is that ways of transport and like public transport and things like this make it possible and easy to come to you and to get there just for a weekend or just for a few days. It's yeah, really, it's, really it's, great. It's good that you mentioned that we are actually located next to the um, highway. So, mm -hmm. so there is loads of divers um, from Czech Republic, Austria, Germany coming to us by car because it mm -hmm. depends from where you go. It's around five, six hours from Berlin. It's, mm -hmm. for instance, five hours driving, uh, maybe five and a half, right? Yeah. So, but <laughs> I, I, I was just talking with one, ca uh, one customer coming from Germany here and he said, oh, it's only four hours driving. Mm -hmm. uh, it's if you drive very fast, yes, <laughs> but it's, it's those are the Germans on the autobahn, you know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. They don't have speed limits, right? So, <laughs> so no, but it's it's um, especially with the car, it's it's very very easy to to reach uh, reach to us. Yeah. And for the accommodation possibilities, um, we have a limited accommodation options here in Deep Spot. Um, we are actually growing because mm -hmm. we, we plan to open a new part where we will have some additional uh, rooms and our accommodation options will increase. But we have also three or four hotels on a different standard around us. Mm -hmm. So it's relatively easy to arrange, arrange something uh, around as well. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a really great option. And for I any, mean, I know, I mean, I'm from Austria, right? So for all the people that come from our, our cold countries, for me, it's just like the perfect thing to do in winter, right? You can only, you can only really dive in Austria for two months. <laughs> if you are sane, I mean, people dive obviously the whole year, but 
the rest of the 10 months, I think this is the perfect option. It's warm. It's literally like diving somewhere tropical. It's so, yeah. so, so nice. Yeah, and I, I think also that the scenario you mentioned, uh, we have loads of divers coming to us before they go for their summer holidays. Mm -hmm. Let's yes. say that you fly to Asia or Caribbean, right? You mm -hmm. want to, to practice a bit of your skills before you go there, right? Yes. It's obviously easier for people that are from the area. Mm -hmm. Probably somebody would not come five hours here to make yeah. one dive. But we, we, we see it, especially now in that um, holiday season, yes. when there's lots of divers coming here just to refresh their skills after the winter. Yeah, that is a, that is a really good option also. That's 100% true. Because now if you go to Egypt for holiday, and you're a holiday diver and you want to practice before you go, you don't want to end up having to wear dry suit and going to the lake. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And on... Uh, on the opposite side, you also don't want to lose all those dives there mm -hmm. to practice like basic skills like buoyancy or yeah. making sure that everything is okay with your equipment. So, so this kind of places are also great for, for, for that. Yeah, 100%, 100%. So tell me a little bit more about the pool and all the features. I mean, it's, it's like, it's so big and so crazy. <laughs> Okay, all right. So um, let's start with the depth, right? Because this is what makes everybody enthusiastic. So 45 meters, 0.45, depends how you count it. <laughs> depends on the water level. Uh, yes, there is also a special hole in the, in the bottom that you can open and get a few more centimeters. But let's say 45 meters would be what, what you can get here. And that's in the tube, right? But what we actually see behind us, we, we see a level between seven and almost the surface, like you see the fins, mm -hmm. fins here, right? Yes. <laughs> uh, so those are, those are divers on the surface. So the main tank, of the of the pool the bottom is on 20 meters mm -hmm. and on 20 meters um you have some options which is a wreck that we have uh, there is also a huge cathedral that goes up to 10 meters there is also quite nice overhead um mm -hmm. environment that you can i would say i i, I shouldn't say overhead on that stage it's more like a swim through yes <laughs> <laughs> but it, it makes it makes your dive more more interesting. Then going up, we have uh, levels of twelve meters, six meters, three meters, and one and a half. Right. So mm -hmm. I I told that uh, in the beginning that that place was also designed for training in mind. Right. Mm -hmm. So you can find all the depths. Yes. which are good for training. You do confined water, you have place to do confined water. You do scuba diver level up to 12 meters, you, you can dive up to 12 meters. And that's also mm -hmm. for recreational divers. So they have all those levels so they can choose which level they feel comfortable with, right? They don't have to go. It's not like yes. a, a tube that goes down to 45 meters. You have loads, loads of options mm -hmm. to, uh, to practice. Yeah. And on top of that, um, we also have a cavern system that is basically open to everybody because we created it and we consulted it um, with specialists. So it is really, really safe, mm -hmm. even for the divers that didn't get a specialized overhead training right yes we, we we get it by by having like a huge holes not only horizontally but also vertically mm -hmm. so it's it's relatively easy to go in to go out and this cavern system have five levels so it's it's really interesting and you can easily spend 20 30 minutes they're inside going through different levels and seeing all the 
interesting things which are there, um, there inside. So those are like basic features for technical details. We have um, 8 million liters of water in the main tank. We have a bit more because um, it's like um, half million is in the system, not in the main tank. So mm -hmm. depends how you count it. <laughs> It's 8 or 8.5. Uh, water temperature is 32 degree. And the main reason to have those 32 degree is that for one hour without um, exercises, 32 degree guarantee you a thermal comfort, mm -hmm. right? So most of the divers that are diving here are just in the rush vests and that's more than enough. Yes. Um, to, to be comfortable. So we have fresh water. So it's, it's, it's fresh water in, in that tank. So this is about the place and technical things around, around the pool. Yeah, it's so amazing. I mean, like I said, I've been there, and I've been to a few deeper pool facilities and most of them, you know, you go down, you at the bottom you look around a little bit and that's it there's not really much you can do in deep spot you can genuinely spend hours just still exploring and finding new places that you haven't really seen before it's it's so nice and like like you said the warm that's the thing for me i'm a warm water diver i like <laughs> it comfortable <laughs> yeah yeah it's it's um uh, that's that's definitely an advantage um and uh uh, but we, we cannot forget that there is also an option to dive here in a dry suit. Yes, so, there is. So, so we are not forgetting. It's not only like a tropical water, mm -hmm. but if you want to dive in more technical equipment, we have twin sets. We have sidemount here. We have dry suits. Yes, the water is 32 degree, but if you use a dry suit without the undersuit, it's, it's fine, right? Yes. So. So it's, it's not only that you can find lots of interesting things underwater, but you can also, we, we, we try to, to give more options to our customers, especially to the diving centers that are coming with their students, because mm -hmm. we see that as a great training facility. Yes, 100%. So, 100% it gives you and having like a, a standard of always having the same light, the same temperature, the same depth, everything, no current. It makes training so much faster in a way because you don't have to deal with all the other things. You can concentrate on your training and you can learn everything you need to do. So then if you end up in the open water somewhere, you have practiced and, and learned everything so well in deep spot that in the open water, it's going to be so much easier in the end. Yeah, and, and I think it's, it's, it's a good point to mention because a lot of people are saying, oh, it's too easy con conditions, right? Yeah. That, that you cannot really train a diver here because then if he goes to the lake or then if he goes to some other places with the current, actually with the current, yeah. let me show you. That we, we, we can create a current here, right? So mm -hmm. that is... That is one of the options that, that, that we have yeah. if needed. Uh, but um, coming back to, to the point, it's we, we already proven after, because we opened back in November 2020, mm -hmm. which was obviously a bit difficult time. Yes, of course. Yeah. But even though since then, there is thousands of divers that being certified or trained in here. And the main mm -hmm. feedback we get from the instructors and those divers is that, yes, this is what you mentioned, Corina. They had such comfortable conditions to practice basic skills. Mm -hmm. Then when they went to the open water to do their dive number three and four, right? Or when they went and just orient in that environment, it was all clicking very, very well. Yes. And the result was not worse and sometimes even better than it mm -hmm. would be in other conditions. Yes, that's, that's amazing. So can anybody just come and try diving in deep spot? Like if I'm not a diver, can I just come there and walk in the door and say, hey, 
I want to try this. Technically, yes. <laughs> we <laughs> we try we try to push all our uh, customers into our online reservation system. Mm -hmm. But technically, if you come and say, "I want to do," I want to try either scuba diving or free diving here. Yes, that's an option. You can buy it from the counter and you can try. It would be much wiser to book it online in advance because then you can be sure that you do it in, in, in the moment when you really plan to do it. But mm -hmm. even if this is a last moment decision, yes, that's, that's possible. And just to give you a perception of how many of those we are doing, probably there are some <laughs> programs happening in the, in, um, uh, there now. Uh, we, we did um, thousands of basic divers and tri dives last year and hundreds of tri free diving last year. So, mm -hmm. so definitely that's a, a great place to, to try diving. I can only compare it with trying diving in the most beautiful place in a tropical mm -hmm. destination, right? Yeah. Because the conditions are perfect. Even if you are a bit scared, right? You can overcome those scares here mm -hmm. in a shallow water in a really con controlled environment. And then you can build up from, from, from there. So, so yes, if somebody just want to come and say, oh, I want to try free diving or scuba diving. I strongly recommend to, um, to book online on deepspot.com. But even if you come and say to our counter uh, reception, oh, okay, I, I, I want to do that, that's possible. Amazing. And how does it work for certified divers? Because obviously people listening now are probably mainly certified divers. Can they come in there? Do they have to book an instructor to get in? Or how does it work when they're certified? That's, that's a very, very good question because different indoor facilities have different rules, right? Yes, so, exactly. so, so we actually allow certified divers to dive without supervision. So the only con we actually have three conditions, right? So first condition, you dive within your limits. Mm -hmm. That's an obvious thing, and that happens everywhere. Second, you need to have a body, or you need to, to dive in a group, right? Because we have lots of um, divers that are coming in a group of three. Mm -hmm. But basically, if somebody comes by himself or herself, then they need to book our instructor, because we are not allowing solo divers to dive in here, either free diving and scuba dive. And the third limitation that we have is that there are only no deco dives here, right? Mm -hmm. So even though the depth is 45 meters, so technically you can go to decompression, we, uh, we kindly ask our customers to, to stay within a no deco limit. Which is fair enough. <laughs> so basically for recreational divers, they, again, that's the same story as with tri dives. Um, they can just come or mm -hmm. they can book online. Booking online always gives you, you can be sure that you will go in in the desired time, mm -hmm. right? Because when you come and you, tr especially over the weekends, if you yeah. come without a reservation, you may need to wait mm -hmm. one hour or two hours in order to have a slot that yeah. is available. Because that's 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 maybe the the the, the last thing I I I, yes. I want to mention here. It's a dive in deep spot is one hour slot. Mm -hmm. We give twelve liter or fifteen liter tank for for that. So so you are allowed to dive for an hour. Obviously, mm -hmm. you can book more slots if you want, but yeah. the basic scuba slot is one hour, and the basic free diving slot is one and a half hour, ninety minutes. Okay, that's, that's amazing. Um, so uh, when somebody wants to book, they just go on deepspot.com, right? Or is it deepspot.com? Exactly. exactly. And we have our, uh, our page available in different languages. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that, that, that you will find 
um, the reservation system easy, easy to use to, to book your dive. And yeah. we ask questions about the license. We ask all the questions on the reservation process. Yes, that, that, that's really good. So the, I, know, I know that all the like paperwork and everything involved is really, really up to standard and you're really making sure to keep your divers safe, which I think is really, really, really good. Or even all the safety features you have, I was just like, whoa. <laughs> no, we, 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 we really try to do that because obviously that's a big operation. Mm -hmm. And when, whenever we, we talk about thousands of dives happening every month, Mm -hmm. there is a possibility that something can happen. And we also want to prepare for that scenario. So, so we make sure that we have equipment, procedures, and also our staff ready to handle this kind mm -hmm. of situations. Yeah, that, that's really great. So tell us a little bit more about the technical difficulties. Because I, I mean, you have this gigantic facility. Yeah. Uh, it's so big. You said 8 million liters of water. Yes. There's bound to be some tricky things going on. Just filtration. I mean, I know I have a smaller pool just to keep it warm and clean at the same time, which deep spot always is, by the way, is already difficult for a tiny pool. How hard must it be for this big of a pool? Yes, that's a bit of the challenge, I would say, and um, that that was that was also challenging for myself because, as I mentioned, my background was more in training, operation, management. I was never managing infrastructure, so the biggest infrastructure I managed in the past was a dive center and one, two, three compressors, maybe one, two boats, and now I have this object <laughs> the building that has lots of things and especially especially the pool so uh, there are there are there are a few layers of that of that question and uh, let's start let's start from the beginning so the water quality because obviously water quality is one of the key performance indicators for the divers right mm -hmm. they expect to see for 50 60 meters or even more, right? So take into consideration that most of the time you can stand on top of the pool, look down and see the, the bottom of the tube and mm -hmm. even see the 45 meters mark. Mm -hmm. That's our goal. But yes. we, we work day by day to get to this standard. And yes, uh, the filtration system is very, very big. So comparing to a small pool, you have to <laughs> multiple, that, that's like 20, 30 times more than in a regular, regular pool. Because mm -hmm. most probably lots of people on that, on that call are familiar with Olympic pools. Mm -hmm. So yes. Olympic pool is 10 lanes, of 50 meters long and normally 2.30 meter depth. Yes. And that's only 2 million liters of water. We are talking four times more here. So filtration is the issue. This is one of the reasons we are not allowing certain equipment like yes. neoprene and, um, and also BCDs to, to be brought here because I think it's worth to mention we we provide the equipment mm -hmm. in a ticket price right so yeah. so you can find a wide range of equipment starting from recreational BCDs ending on on on, on the side mount and one of the reasons is that we we don't really want divers to come with their own BCDs you can use your own regulator you can use your own mask you need to have your own computer, but you cannot bring a BCD uh, here or the wetsuit. Wetsuit is not necessary. Yeah, it don't need that anyways. <laughs> yes, exactly. But, but filtration, that's, that's one of the issues. Second issue is obviously a temperature of the water. So we basically keep the water in the loop. However, the evaporation that we have is quite significant. So we use um, thermal water to add from our system. That's one of the reasons 
why we are located in that place. And uh, just recently, we uh, have a new solar panel system that is heating up the water because even though it is coming from the from a thermal pipe it mm -hmm. needs a heat up because there are quite big loses on the on the piping piping system as well so so that's that's i would say second layer so so keeping the temperature but from being here corina you you know it's pretty warm yes. right <laughs> Because nice. I like it. <laughs> yes, but again, it's a tropical conditions, and um, you can feel it being in the water and also being out from the water, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's lots of lots of um, lots of heat. And the third thing you mentioned is the cleanness of the pool. So that is really challenging. I mean, that needs because you cannot do it by the robots, right? Mm -hmm. You have a small pool or regular shaped pool, and then you can put the robot in and then it will clean your pool very well. With this pool, we cannot rely on robots. Uh, robots <laughs> cleaning robots are not going down to 45 meters. Um, so we have a team uh, that is cleaning the pool and it happens four times per week uh, mm -hmm. outside opening hours where the pool is vacuumed the walls are cleaned so all this process is happening behind the closed doors of deep spot yeah no but it's so much and i mean it's always sparkling clean i've not seen one peck of dirt i know even on the surface on the beach area where the tires are they constantly clean it's so clean um so you really don't have to worry about anything and one thing that also fascinated me a lot you're talking about the evaporation right yes. but upstairs like usually when you think it should be super humid and like everything you would you would expect equipment to to like get you know issues like mold but not at all the upstairs is actually quite dry i mean things can dry there you can hang up a towel and it will get dry and all of this so it's not that humid at all yeah that's that's obviously part of the of the design it's the ventilation system that that, mm -hmm. that we have because yes dealing with this water evaporation the humidity in the place like that that's 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 quite challenging as well right yeah. but obviously there was there was lots of um, thoughts behind uh, planning that 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 object, uh, building that object, but also uh, it's 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 also pretty. And I think it, it it will be interesting for people on that call is if you want to buy if you want to 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 build the pool, right? You basically go to the company and you tell them I want to build the pool, and they give you like. 20 blueprints depending mm -hmm. on what size what type of filtration system and then you can you want to build something like that and it's always an experiment it's like yeah. sending people to mars and obviously i am not comparing us with sending somebody to mars but there are no answers to the questions right yeah, you of need course. to find an answers during the construction period or some of the answers are very expensive mm -hmm. <laughs> as well yeah. so so you need to manage manage those this business side and also uh safety and construction uh possibilities yeah no it's it's really it's such a technical marvel it's really really exciting so but now you have this deep pool right and we talked about yeah. this a little bit earlier I want to know, is there anything that you can actually get certified in that pool? I mean, I know the answers, but I mean, there's obviously you have this pool and once you do one or two dives, people might think that's it and that's all I can do. But is there more that you can do? Can you get certifications? Can you do specialties, stuff like that? Uh, definitely, because um, especially nowadays when there is more and more places like, like Deep Spot, um, mm -hmm training agencies are recognizing that this is the place where training can happen and can maintain a very good quality. 
So basically, you can do all levels of free diving here, instruct, including instructor course. Mm -hmm. And this can be done entirely here. So level one, level two, level three instructor course can be done in here. Then when we go to scuba, uh, starting from basic diver and, mm -hmm. and the try, you can do in here. You can do scuba diver here. Mm -hmm. You can do indoor diver here, which is an equivalent to the yeah. open water diver. But then divers, in, in order to get the open water certification, they need to get some experience under instructor supervision in the open, the open water. Then there are certain specialties, including dry suit specialty, perfect buoyancy, um, uh, enriched air, that can be done in that place and can be certified in that place, because that is also uh, yes. important. Some of the courses you can do partially, mm -hmm. but there are courses that you can entirely do here which is yeah. in, which might be interesting you mentioned this winter scenario in our mm -hmm. part of europe right so you can be certified in certain specialty before you go somewhere abroad for your holidays or you can upgrade your certification or you can do part of your training before you go somewhere abroad and then do just a final part uh there so yes yes there are there are there is lots of lots of options um, and more and more training organizations are recognizing that this is really safe and a good training environment. Yes, yes. No, it is. And it's so amazing because, like I said earlier, it says you can concentrate on what you want to learn in Deep Spot. And I think, I mean, when I was there, I've also seen a lot of like technical diving doing at least like their first few ses sessions and training sessions, um, CCRs, I know the horizon and side mount, for example, which is really interesting. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, you know, it's, it's, there is lots of instructors that already understand it, but obviously some of them, because they didn't try it, they think that, oh, this is again, too good conditions. For, yes. for, for <laughs> training and being in training for quite a long time, also supervising that place from a training perspective. Lots of instructors from, uh, from uh, the organization I was working for were doing training here. I, I was discussing it with them. Now I am discussing with lots of our customers and they all say, in the beginning, we had some reservations. Now there is no reservation. The mm -hmm. quality of the product, so the, the final certification that's as good as in the regular open water or sometimes even better. Yeah. And there's one thing to mention, I think that's really important, like from a training agency perspective, like from SSI, I know you can do a course, an open water course, for example, in so many different environments already. There's a big difference if I do an open water course in Egypt on a nice sunny day uh, compared to, I mean, I'm, I live in South Africa at the moment. If you want to do open water in South Africa, so, you, so do you wanna especially you, mm. <laughs> you have to like sit on that boat and hold on and you got swell and waves and a lot of action. And it's very different diving. It doesn't mean that it's, that they're like underwater part is so much different, but there's already a huge difference from, with between types of oceans and lakes and stuff. So um, in a lake, you might have no visibility. So there's already so many different options. It's not like deep spot is like a completely out of the box option there. So I think it's, it's a really, really amazing facility to practice in and to learn something and, new in. And I know that we have loads of, lo loads of divers listening to us and, I can say from my experience that there is no perfect conditions that would train you for every scenario. Like you exactly. mentioned, like diving in the ocean in South Africa is completely different than diving in a German lake. Yes. Uh, and doesn't mean that the diver trained in South Africa or Germany is, is better or in deep exactly. spot is better. What is really important is that if you really want to dive in a new conditions, different from the ones that you were trained, this check dive 
is mm -hmm. really, really important. That, that orientation to the environment under supervision of dive professional a dive center, that's super important, no matter where you are certified, right? Yes. Because you could be certified in the Baltic Sea, then go to Saduana Bay, and when you have to push the boat out from the beach, yes. that's a completely different environment. Hundred <laughs> <100%. laughs> percent. No, it is. It is that way, and it's it's really nice that you have these options. So. If we have, I know we have a lot of divers listening here, but we might also have some diving centers listening. So I just want them to hear, are there any things that dive centers can get in touch with you about like B2B things? Is there group offers? If I have a dive center in Germany and I want to bring a group to you, uh, is there any special deals or is there anything I need to look out for? So uh, the simple answer is yes. <laughs> we, we work with dive centers. And especially for the training, we really have interesting options, right? Because yeah. we have those daily entrances where you can do loads of sessions over one day. And it especially mm -hmm. makes sense when you are coming from a far distance, right? And you want to come for a few days, we have those available. We also have a package options for dive centers to bring your customers for recreational dives. Mm -hmm. I always encounter dive centers to plan here some training activity because again, it's a, a beautiful place. And like you said, there's loads of things to be seen here, but that's also a great training place, yeah. right? And, and I would say the fact that we don't have the reef that's the advantage yes. because you are not wasting your time on the reef. You can focus on the skills itself. 100%. <laughs> so so um, coming back to, to, to your question, there are package options. There are training packages uh, as well available for, for, for the dive centers. We work on, on, on different levels. We work with individual instructors. We also work with dive centers, right? Because yeah. depending on the organization, they may be differently affiliated. So, so we, have, we have those two levels of cooperation, both for training and for recreation. There's also uh, classrooms at your facility. I mean, top of the art classrooms with with TVs, smart TVs, and everything you can think of. I, I know they're available also, right? They can also, can they also be rented? That's, that's, that's correct. So, so at, at current stage, we have three classrooms. Um, so two of them, we call it dry classrooms that actually can be combi combined in one big room. Mm -hmm. So it, it is even, DeepSpot is even kind of conference ready so it mm -hmm. might be like a meeting for the club or something, or there is lots of presentations happening here. Then we have a wet classroom upstairs, actually two of them right now. And we are most probably around July, we will have three additional classrooms. Oh, nice. And basically the classrooms, whenever you book the, uh, the slots the uh, diving slots with us you can rent the classroom and this is included in the price mm -hmm. obviously oh, the wow. availability is is the problem at that stage because we only have those three classrooms and we also use the classroom ourselves but now we try to overcome that issue with uh, with uh, building three additional classrooms and they will be available soon so yes, it's, it's a very easy thing. You just speak with our reception, they make the reservation and that is, that is possible. So that's why lots of, not only practical part, confined water, open water happening here, but also theory part between the sessions happening in deep spot and, and our facilities ready for that. That's so, it's really amazing. I mean, there's really for everything. And, and one thing I've seen it work amazing for is pro training, right? So, 
So having the classroom right there, there's also a restaurant. So you can do pretty much in a whole like instructor course besides any open water portions, but you can pretty much do most of it, everything there. And it's such a, uh, a confined environment in a way that makes it so efficient to do instructor training, which is really, really exciting for my side. Yeah, and <laughs> and this, is, this is quite common feedback we get from, from, from instructors and the trainers is that you are not losing time for transitions between the sessions here, yes. right? And that's, it's everything about the time nowadays, right? Yes, and 100%. that place allows you to save lots of time and spend it on the training, not on the transitioning between the hotel, between the classroom, between the water. And yeah, that, that was the intention behind that, that place. Yeah. No, that's really amazing. No, really, it's really, really, really exciting. So if somebody wants to get in touch with you, we can just put also the email address in the in the comments. Otherwise, I think one of the best places to go is deepspot.com, right? Deepspot.com, and there is loads of possibilities to contact us there. Uh, the, um, the email address, um, that is uh, mm, that might be a bit difficult for some of our um mm -hmm. uh, audience because it's receptia so it's polish, polish. for reception at deepspot.com but again the, the best would be to go to deepspot.com and you can find all the contacts um there our reception speaks english so so there is no problem um contacting us in in english um yeah. And uh, most of our staff here in, um, on place, they also speak English. So, yeah. so it's, it's relatively easy to communicate as in any other place where you go to, to, to have some diving. 100%. So I have one last question for you. What do you enjoy most about working at Deep Spot? What's your favorite part? The favorite part is that I can be in the water every day if I want. <laughs> so, so that's, that's, that's the most a beautiful thing. So, so one day I can manage a project of the ventilation system on the roof. Yeah. And I, <laughs> I can have a meeting at nine for that. And then um, sometimes I'm also involved because I'm an instructor for so many years and I still enjoy teaching people. So let's say two hours later, I am conducting a basic diver program for some completely new divers. So that's that's very cool. That's, yeah. that's very cool. You definitely have a different variety as if you just do one thing, like in the tra just training, where you always do training. Now you have to deal with compressors and yes. so many compressors. And like you said, ventilation, windows. I mean, one thing I really loved about the location also was the glass roof essentially you have such amazing beautiful natural light in there always but to keep keeping that clean i think is also a challenge and i can see the infrastructure there's so many things you have to learn so i think that's a very 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 exciting thing that you're doing congratulations to what you're doing and i think it's a really amazing facility and an amazing job Everyone out there, you should definitely try and check it out if you have the possibilities. Uh, if you're listening to this in replay, let us know. Let us give us a comment. Leave us a little bit of a like there. We're always excited to see when people are listening. I know Sunday 11 o'clock is usually not when people are on Facebook, but I'm sure there will be a lot of uh, replay listeners out there. So thank you very much. Thank you for having this chat for me with me. Um, thank you for the beautiful background. <laughs> thank you for the invitation, Corina. It's it, it is a pleasure. It's always nice to see you, and always nice to see Deep Spot. I already miss it. I'm gonna have to come back soon. And thank you, on, uh, everyone out there, for listening. And we're excited to welcome you to our next Scuba Sunday. We will always, like always, uh, market it on Facebook before, so you'll know what's happening. Thanks so much and bye everyone.